defendant in a criminal case would want to know, right? But in her case, she went to find out the records are sealed, right? The case is dismissed and the record is sealed. She can't find out anything, right? When does that ever happen? Where somebody, a crime is perpetrated against somebody and uh, the, the way that the, or the manner in which the criminal case was resolved remains unknown to the defendant. Well, I am not surprised about this and, case. <laughs> and unknown to the victim of the crime, right? The outcome of the criminal case remains unknown to the victim of the crime. She can't find anything else. Now, this only happens when we're dealing with those agents and operatives and assets of the state, of the so-called government. Exactly. Right? This criminal enterprise that masquerades as the people serve in government. And which brings me to uh, something very interesting that I uh, obtained in, uh, as part of a discussion that I was listening to. And a gentleman uh, whose name I will not reveal um, spoke about this type of protection. And he said rather than uh, the government existing for the ostensible reasons that, and the legitimate reasons that it's supposed to exist, it's supposed to exist the primary purpose for the existence of our government is supposed to be the securement and protection of our rights. Uh, the, those rights that are enumerated in the, uh, the Bill of Rights section or the Declaration of Rights section in every U.S. state constitution and the rights that are enumerated in the Bill of Rights section of the Constitution of the United States, the federal constitution. Uh, instead, uh, the government exists for these four primary purposes. Number one, the control of persons and property, right? The state having uh, a say in just about every aspect of our lives, right? That's purpose number one. Number two, for the protection of those agency creations, those departments, those bureaucratic uh, entities uh, that facilitate purpose number one, right? The third is the generation of revenue. Mm -hmm. right? And the fourth, is the protection of those individuals, those assets, those operatives, those agents, those officers uh, of those bureaucracies that I spoke about, of those entities, the, uh, the extra constitutional agency creations and the departments that facilitate points, uh, purposes one, two, and three. That's right. right? So here so that's we see a textbook example, the non-conviction for the beating of Rosa Rejas, the non-conviction of Jose Fleet, uh, subsequent to his act of criminality, uh, is clearly an example of purpose number four, the government serving as the protector of their agents and their assets. That's exactly right, mm -hmm. because in my case, my husband was a New York City detective, and the same players are on her case, they set into motion. There's Ronald Richter, there's Helen C. Sturm, and Child Protective Services, same exact uh, uh, players. They, her case, uh, they sealed her, his criminal records. In my case, uh, where his name was supposed to be placed on the state central register, they gave him a fake name. So his name is completely changed. It says he sexually abused my daughter. It said it was substantiated. But Children's Services and the system changed his name. And mm -hmm. that's the same thing that they did with her. And it's the same players. We have, I offer a $5,000 reward for the uh, arrest and conviction of Zineb Shaheen, Ronald Richter from ACS. These people are on this woman's case, and what are they doing? Nothing. Um, I'm also offering a $5,000 uh, reward for the arrest and conviction of Helen Sturm is also on this case. So now we have the evidence that this happens when people work for the system. As you said, Joe, and as you've explained it so eloquently, uh, it's a systematic abusing of people and protecting those in power. Um, so y you're very familiar with my case, and so right. you're not surprised to hear what happened to her, because what's the difference? Right. You, you necessito una llamada uh, D.A. Morgenthau and, uh, and, and diga Morgenthau, the attorney, um, the district attorney in the, uh, what is it, the, um, the woman's, uh, they have a, a departamento. They have, yes, a sex abuse team. A sex yes. abuse team 
in in this in the district attorney's office, De Margenthal, and you need to Yamada the sex abuse team and say, what happened with the rape charge here? Why was it dismissed? Morgan knows about this case. Yeah. This oh, yes, uh, Morgan Thor knows about this I, case. No, I was in his office. Yes, okay. yes. And you see, that's... Uh, that's he's very interesting in this case. But uh, you need to ask him why he didn't prosecute for the rape. Well, well of course, now, now he's very interested in this case because there's another element to this case. And the other element of this case is that Jose Fleet has created a series of photographic images of Jose, 11 years old, uh, of the child uh, inappropriately dressed. Uh, and Undressed. And He's naked. Pictures of the <laughs> child naked. Refer to as pornography. On the internet? Right? Pornography. No. no. No, for his own pleasure. Right. And Rosa has come into possession of these, uh, of these photographic images. Uh, how uh, she came into possession of them is not exactly clear at this point. But the photos show Jose uh, naked uh, in the apartment of Jose Fleet Sr. Right? So it cannot rightly be said uh, that these photographs were created uh, by any other person other than Jose Fleet Sr. So right. that's why uh, D.A. Morgenthau all of a sudden now is very interested in this case. He wasn't interested uh, in 1995 when Rosa was beaten and, 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 and Jose Sr. should have been convicted for that. But now that uh, there is uh, a legal liability of enormous proportions in this case, right? now, now he's taking an interest. Well, in I'm still case. surprised that he's taking an interest because I had a photograph of my husband masturbating in bed with my daughter. And uh, Morgan thought, yeah. let that go. There was never a conviction. No. Right. So. I just want to say a, a very hearty uh, thank you and shout out to Brad Hamilton Absolutely. of the New York Post, the reporter who has been attending the hearings and following this case with uh, Janon Fisher for helping you. I think the New York Post deserves, you know, a little bit of a shout out. Uh, thank you, you know. Face, I mean, uh, she know one that, that, right. that everybody know about this case. See. I don't know what happened because well, the one day... Well, doesn't on, say that. It says that she can't show the photographs. On July 6th, I was in court. When I went, I went, I went back to my home, I found over the, over the, my, my door to picture on the Jose don't use a dress. And the, uh, the picture was in the envelope, in the big envelope, and the, in the picture say, I don't remember exactly the say, the Rosa, uh, you see this, this picture and show, show, to, show to the judge, if the judge don't help, uh, I don't know, because she took the envelope. Oh, no. She yeah, took she envelope. took the envelope and the picture, and she say, uh, if he, and she put this orange, if it's somebody send this picture for the news, for the internet, or for But you someplace. don't have a copy of the picture. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah I she have. Does. Of course yes. she does. She has I the originals. Have. She has I the have. Picture. Okay. And uh, I don't know what, <laughs> I'm not sure who is the people that have the picture, because the people say, I have two more, two more pictures. If the judge don't help you, okay, I send this for the new. So somebody